Hello and welcome from Berlin, you aspiring cocktail piano players. We are learning a lot today. New types of uh, voicings for your chords. Also, we will learn different patterns, how to play these different chords with voicings or with arpeggios. And since it is much more fun to learn the dry theory from within a piece, uh, I did a very slow piece that you can follow easily but it's just so much more fun if you have something to use it on let's go straight away i hope you enjoy it
So let's start with the voicings and let's repeat quickly what we learned so far. A voicing is a description of how we play a chord. For example, if the chord is C major, you do nothing uh, about how to play the C major chord. For that we need a voicing and in my first tutorial uh, of cocktail piano you learned already voicings like when we have C, when we have C major, 7, 2, or 7, 2 or 9. 2 or 9 are interchangeable, they are the same. 3 and 5. So this is 7, 9, 3, 5 voicing. And with this description, which always goes from bottom to top, we have a complete description of how to play it. And you can use this description for other major chords because it's a structural description. 7, 3, 9, 5 you can also use, for example, let's say the D minor chord. D minor chord is this one and the 7, 9, 3, 5 description would be this one. It's also 7, 9, 3, 5, of course, in a minor chord, the 3 means the minor third. We don't have to repeat that, yes? So, and we also found out in my last tutorial that one chord progression is dominant in jazz standards, uh, by far dominant, and that is uh, tonic, and instead of the uh, archetypal uh, um, chord progression one subdominant uh, f uh, dominant seven chord the subdominant is replaced by the second step we built the step model of these tetra chords and we found out the second step is a d minor seven chord the dominant seven chord is a g7 so uh, this is a two five and that this shows up with the uh, resolution to the tonic or without both both is possible and that uh, a typical standard goes through several of these two five or two five one chord progressions now i wrote this piece um exemplar uh, exemplary can you say so uh, not using too many for this tutorial too many um, sub keys but i reduced this on the d minor seven g seven and the E minor 7 and A7. So this is not too much for you. Now, when we come to voicings, this is uh, something brand new I'm telling you here. It's the so-called A voicing. It means, since we have a lot of 2-5 combinations, um, minor 7 and dominant 7 chord, uh, there have been ways to try to combine them in a really nice way. And one of them is called uh, the A voicing. We come later to the B voicing in the next tutorial. And this term has been uh, uh, forged by John Mahagan and his, in his school of voicings. And it's very practical to learn. So let's say we have the two five voicings of C. That means D minor 7 and G7. Now, when we have, uh, I now switch hands, this is the root, and we have here D minor seven. In uh, jazz, we very often imply also the nine if it's not written in the chord symbol. It's almost always there, the nine, because we love the more complex chord with the seven and the nine. So, mm, you see this? Now, if we want to go to uh, G7, and I told you in my last tutorial, the closer the accompanying hand is to the next chord, the better. It sounds nicer if we have a D minor seven and we find the next, the nearest possibility to play G7. And the I minor chord, uh, the, um, the A voicing combination, it's actually a combination, goes like this, D minor seven, and now, G7. And this part is new for you. You know already the, the this one, the 3, 5, 7, 9 chord. And here we go to G7 and look how much I do. Almost nothing. I take just this, it's the 7 of, now it's the 7 of D. And it becomes in G, it becomes the 3rd the of G. 
You see? The rest stays the same. And this is fabulous. This is really the closest way to do it. It's one voice moving. <coughs> Only a half tone step. But, <coughs> pardon my German, this is the, uh, this new for you. Why? Let's have a look at the voicing. We have again the seven, the nine, and the three. And up to now, you only knew, coming from my previous tutorials, the seven, nine, three, five voicing. But in this combination, we have the seven, nine, three, 13 voicing. The 13 is also called the six, but in this case, we call it 13, and I will stick to 13. There's a reason for it, because um, we go about when we play when we learn the jazz chords, we stacking in jazz, people have decided to stack, to pile upon the different thirds. So a C6 chord is something different than a C13 chord. You see, because the 13 has been added to the 6 and it's not replacing it, a six C6 chord is harmless. It does not imply the 7, 9, or the 11, but a C13 chord implies all the notes, all the optional notes in between. A C13 implies we use the 7, the 9, and not the 11, we leave that out, but that's why I will call the, in this context, we are in G, this is the 13. So, and it has a wonderful jazzy sound. The one with the five is also nice, but in this combination with the two five, it's just brilliant. It has this lovely jazzy, very close sound. And then resolving, if we want so, to the C major chord with the three, five, seven, nine. You see how close it all is, and I told you, the closer the better. So, and this is a real standard um, for combining these two five combinations, either with the tonic or without. So now I also told you in my last tutorial that, of course, in the standard, we don't always stay in D minor, G7, but that we have two five combinations of other keys or, as I call it, tonal centers, because the key might stay C of the piece, but, and here we are leaving the sector of uh, C major playing, which many of you are strong fans of, but if you want to progress, we have to look at other 2-5 combinations and I'm leaving with you with this piece to the next one, which is E minor 7, A7. Um, if we take E minor E minor 7 and A7, you see they look suspicious. So minor 7 and the dominant very often are another 2-5 combination and in this case it's quite clear the D, E minor 7 is, this, is the 2 of D and A7 is the 5, the dominant 7 of D. So we're changing here the tonal center. It, it is related to D. It's the new one, but not the new key of the piece. We are wandering through different sub-keys, if you want so. And this is the first one for you to leave C. Um, you're now leaving the C sector, as I would say in Berlin. And um, so we have E minor 7, and now the beautiful thing about um, the structural description uh, about this A voicing thing is you can use it on all 2-5 combinations as long as you learn the structure. Remember our structure was we started with the 3-5-7-9 of E minor 7, that is this one here. No new knowledge needed. It's four ends in a row, no new knowledge needed. And uh, you remember now that only one voice was moving. It was the seven 
moved a half tone step down and became the three of the dominant seven chord. Now we have this A minor seven, three, five, seven, nine, here with the bass. Now again, one note here, we're going now to A7, becomes the major third of A7. And it's the same again. Now and we have an A7, we have the 7, 9, 3 and 13. It's the same thing. We have D minor 7, G7, E minor 7, A7. Beautiful, isn't it? The learning curve in the beginning will be steep, but the more you do of it, the more it will become your new home. Because after a while, you will really understand the keyboard and uh, the different keys and intervals. It's really good training. Now, we, are, we have this E minor seven and A seven, which is, A seven now is the dominant of D. And here we come to one extra, very special voicing. Because we go from A7, um, we go f uh, from A7 to D. Um, we could either go to D major or D minor. In this case, we go from A7 to D minor in my piece. Now, and, uh, this is now something. So we have this two five combinations with our A voicing. And we have a new dominant, and that is the dominant if the tonic is minor. And there's something happening. A, to a dominant seven chord can change its shape. It's not always the same. Basically, a, a two in uh, a, a, a two is always in my in, in two. It's like three, five, seven, nine, blah, blah, blah. But in on the dominant, things can get. Uh, bit lovelier, or if you want so, more complicated, but also great. Now listen to this. It's also the A7, but it's the A7 we use to go to the D minor chord. Listen how lovely this sounds. Mm, this alone is a, deserves a Grammy. Hold on. So, what happens here? And there's something weird. Um, well, they found out that if you, you know, in the 60s, um, they found out, uh, well, what if we leave the usual structure um, and add, um, like, a, add a sharp nine to our chord. Usually we have the A7 and then they played around, as I said, like theory always follows experience and then somebody said like, uh, uh, because it was not in the theory books, what if we add the sharp nine and thought, they thought it's, it's lovely, it's rather lovely. And uh, then they also experimented with, uh, so we have the seven here, the major third, the seven and the nine. And then the rule went, uh, yeah, but the sharp nine has to be on top of the major third. If we play it below, it sounds, yeah, let me call it what it is, shit. So, but then Bill Evans came along and he said, well, rules are rules, but I'm a genius. And genius is skipping rules. And he did this. He did this A. So he played the minor, th uh, the sharp nine below the major third, actually, and <laughs> building this uh, minor second, this half tone clash. happened everybody played it after that 
it was great great discovery and also with the dominant uh, in minor um, they figured out like first it was like G, then they, the sharp nine and then they said let's also do something with the five and they altered also the five to the sharp five so it became this Magnificent. So we have the seven, major three, sharp nine, and the uh, sharp five, and sharp nine. And since both the five uh, was altered, altered means um, just changed or augmented, heightened. Uh, and the nine was altered, they called this the altered chord. And sometimes in books you might see the ALT, 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 uh, dot. And that means just that it's the altered chord. They altered the five and the nine. And this is a voicing that is great. We, I don't use it here, but it will come. It's the seven, three, sharp, five, sharp, nine to the to this one where the sharp nine we put here and the five stays here so now we have this wonderful wonderful voicing for the a7 um, as a dominant seventh chord for the d minor with the augmented five and the sharp nine now we go from this from the a7 we go to to the d minor again and now also something new for you the d minor is the one of the a7 because it's a minor uh, a dominant of a minor chord so this is the passing one or the how you call it the transitory one because at the same time the d minor seven is again the two of the C major chord being followed by the G7 and then so we have this the uh, typical thing which is we have a 5 A75 with the augmented uh, intervals going to its 1 and this 1 is already again has a double meaning it has a double function and this is very often used in, uh, in songs by the composer because it has the gives the uh, has the effect of flow you know it's not the real harbor but it's again at the same time a two of in this case of C and going to the five of C and going to the one now this is already plenty I believe so you have the a voicing of uh, for C and for D like being the E minor 7, A7, and you have the a wonderful dominant voicing for a minor tonic, the minor one here, the D minor chord. Now I, um, I composed this piece in a way that it's a progression, uh, that you have the melody that comes with it, and so that the, the voicings are not just theory, but are actually supporting a melody and uh, that in the second time around, you have these, um, the fills I won't show because it's, the video is going to too long, you see it in the slow motion afterwards, um, so that you, once you are here safe, you can do in the second, uh, uh, second chorus, you can play, you have time for the fills. You have to be very fast with your eyes there and not lose control of the center bit. Then I did a, uh, a part uh, that is important um, where I just played the voicing. Like after I played the piece A, A, B, A, um, like A part, B part, A part, I did the following. I played, I improvised something on not so important what I play right now here, but you might have realized that, whoa, I play the voicing and there's no root. 
hey, how does that work? Because I, um, this voicing from D minor seven on its own, if we forget about the root, the bass note, this is just the F major chord, right? It's just the F major chord basic position. But, and this is an interesting effect, our um, ears, our brain learned already this, uh, we introduced this with the roots. So, I decided now to, to play a little thinner variation, just with the voicings and the roots missing. It has a great effect because we have a, like the fat with the bass and then we have just a thinner um, thing with the voice in the middle and so how does it work why do we know that this is not F major but it's the voicing three five seven nine of D minor because our brain is completing the chord our brain is completing the root and it's especially working when we play a long C. You know, we are in C now. And we play. In, if it's the F major, we would have to play the B flat. So the brain is actually realizing first from completing the voicing with the root because it was introduced before. Um, and plus what we play in the right hand, the, the brain is completing the key. So this for the brain is still the D minor 7. And uh, uh, you can play this and improvise here. And we have a little bit thinner, more fragile, yeah, more, um, how we call it? Yeah, uh, thinner sound. And we are waiting, of course. It still knows its way through E minor 7. No problem. You just play the voicings and this is also a great way of practicing the voices. If you practice them without the root, you can just play, uh, practice the whole thing with first the voicings without the bass. Of course then, at some point, the brain and the ears want the root again and then here we go and then and here we go again you see so it's a um, it's also a great point for arranging your piano um, you see we also played uh, in the middle part uh, I played this um, I gave it a different color so we, I played bass, voicing, bass, voicing, which is a standard accompaniment. And then I gave it an arpeggio part where I used the F. You see in the left hand, I play this pattern, the 1-5-9 pattern, which you got from my pop piano tutorial. It's also good for cocktail piano. I said, watch also my pop piano tutorials. You can use many things from there. Like here we have F. This is again, I don't know how I did played it exactly. So I just arpeggiated and used this one and dissolved the chords. Here we have the, um, the B flat major chord. How can this happen? It tells you that we are now in the key of F major. How did I get there in this middle part? So, very clearly, this is the uh, B flat major part, which is the four of F. It's a subdominant of F. I got there by finishing my uh, the A part with like we are ending here, G min D minor 7 and C. And now I played. 
I played this little bridge. It's preparing the different key in the B part. Like it's the two and the five of F. So I want the B part to be in F. I just prepared it by playing the two and the five before. We are on C again. Oh, hold on. Oh no, we were on G7 and then I put the G7 uh, in to G minor 7, which is the 2 of F and the 5 of F, and suddenly, effortlessly, we are in F for the. And now it's not a transitory um, uh, tonal center, but it's really a new key, which is, happens often that the B part really is in a different key because it's really established. It's not, it's the whole time now we stay in this. So it's really established. It's not just two chords and then we can talk about another key. Uh, hold on. So, you see? This is how we modulate it into the B part by putting G minor 7, C7 and then walk straight into F. And you guessed it already, it's again the A voicing. 3, 5, 7, 9 of G minor 7 and C7 going into F. So with this um, I also introduced a new structure for the listener. It's not obtrusive but um, a cocktail piano means we are in the background. We are not meant to be a solo pianist who, who wants 70,000 people in the stadium uh, to cheer at you. Well I would love to but uh, nobody would cheer. And but we give it a different color. So we come from this pattern, um, root voicing, root voicing, to something different, like something arpeggiated. And so on. Which you can play really freely from timing. The timing is of no importance. Lose time and space. You can take as much time as you like for all of this. Uh, because that's what we want. We want to l make the people feel like there's no time and no space in their life for as long as they buy overcharged um, cocktails, overpriced. So, and, um, and then I went again, I put something high, and then I went to this. I took, took the, um, the voicings in the right hand and played something low in this warm sector here. And it's just very beautiful just to play these... Um, no, it was like this. Uh, no, very warm down here. A couple of those chords are enough to create atmosphere. You see, just like that. And you have managed another 15 minutes of underpaid um, hotel service. See, just different registers here, here, a little bit of voice, um, bass, voicing, bass, voicing, a little bit of arpeggio, just, you know, gliding away in the background, but still be kind of interesting, not dull, not dull. There is a wallpaper, but this wallpaper has a nice pattern. You must be high quality wallpaper, okay? not just the usual that you have at home, the cheap one. <laughs> so, um, I think that's really <coughs> plenty. Uh, a quick word on, uh, uh, on the fills I play, like when we are in... Uh, here. Of course, these fills are now in F, and there are, we're in the B part, and they are bluesy. I love this. I love this to put little bluesy um, fills to give it a, I don't know, this great, great, uh, blue, a small bluesy touch which shows uh, sophistication and style. And uh, so th that's why I also told you, follow my bluesy, bluesified songs. and. Look how I bluesify songs, how they sound. You can use that too. 
So and you just use um, the blues minor, minor third and so you can do any bluesy stuff here then as a fill. And in the end I do, uh, we're ending on C, the, the key of the piece and uh, if I remember right I did it um, like we end in D flat major approaching the tonic C and with a just a two voiced voicing, two voiced voicing and look how lovely that sounds. It doesn't have to be the fat bit. Like but just and this voicing is just 7-3. And in my future tutorials we will also talk about different voicings um, other than the, these four voiced voicings, like two voiced voicings. Beautiful. Gliding down chromatically to C and then I play the sharp 11. It's the four, but we call it 11 in this context, with the sharp in the end. It's a lovely open sound. It's not in C. It's not in the C scale, so it's a, it's a tension note, a strong tension note. But since we give it time in the final arpeggio, the ear is grasping it, at least after the second time, and it's, um, it's uh, taken away to a different sphere. So, ah. Uh, you see, it's not in C, but the, it's a trick, uh, it's a jazzy trick to play the sharp 11 in the end to create the sound and it makes you also sound really knowledgeable and like an old uh, connoisseur of uh, cocktail piano. Now this was massive, now comes the slow motion and if you want to play this song, uh, there's with the sheet music there's a MIDI file also and I find it also always very nice to learn voicings in the context of a piece because then we also uh, see its function in the piece and, uh, and how it works together with the bass note and the melody. Thanks very much. Leave a like, subscribe if you liked it and all the best from Berlin. Bye bye.
I hope you liked my video and that you learned something. Now you can subscribe. Just press this subscribe button or click on another of my videos on this side. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.